hi everybody. Uh, I'm Dr. Ben Zellner. I'm a hand and upper extremity surgeon here at OSMS. This is our Facebook live session uh, centered around trigger fingers and tendon disorders about the hand and wrist. Uh, just to briefly start, um, like I said, Ben Zellner. Um, I grew up here in Wisconsin in the Madison area. I've been here at OSMS for five years. Uh, I was down in Texas for my orthopedic residency training, followed by going to Freighter Hospital in Milwaukee at the Medical College of Wisconsin for hand and upper extremity training. So I do from finger trip to shoulder. Um, just to start out, you know, we're still in the middle of a pandemic, so we're still doing a lot here at OSMS to keep patients safe. Uh, we have social distancing in the lobby, we've separated the chairs, we don't let people use every chair as we have limited visitors. Uh, we're still going through the same protocol over the past, what was that, 15 months now, uh, to try to sanitize things and disinfecting uh, like you see at most uh, medical facilities. We've done a lot of telemedicine visits trying to keep people uh, out of the office if they don't feel comfortable in the office. We are still masking here in our building. Uh, that's pretty consistent across the board for most healthcare facilities. We also do rheumatology here, and rheumatology patients tend to be immunosuppressed, so we're trying to be cognizant of their safety uh, by having everybody mask. Uh, just to quickly start out, I mean, we have some questions already. So, uh, is it safe to have surgery in this in the right now? And I, the answer is yes. You know, we've been doing surgery um, since. May actually with our surgery center. Uh, the surgery center is on the second floor of, of most of our buildings or the building here in, in Green Bay as well as Marinette. I'm sorry, it's Green Bay and Appleton and Marinette. We have procedure room only, but we've been doing surgery safely there. We haven't had any trouble. We're testing people for COVID who haven't been vaccinated um, and it has worked out well so far. Uh, so it's safe and it's, it's safer here than in a hospital setting. Now there are no COVID positive people admitted to our surgery center. Those are all at the hospital. Um, we also have a question about why did, why did I become a doctor, why did I decide to become a doctor. Uh, I guess that's probably a long story, but it's a, it's a fun occupation. Uh, we get to do a lot of good things. I guess my introduction would have been when I hurt myself as a teenager uh, with tearing my knee, knee uh, ACL ligament. Uh, so that led to procedures and that led to me getting back to sports after a long process, but it was kind of interesting to see it from the patient side and it seemed like a, a good uh, uh, occupation. Uh, it seems it's fun to watch people get back to their former level of activity, uh, get them back to doing the things that are fun. And for me, that was basketball at the time. Um, so that was a good experience, and that's what made me start out. Uh, and then I jumped into hand and upper extremity surgery, mainly for the variety. We get to do a lot of things. As hand surgeons, we operate on tendons, nerves, arteries, bones. Um, it's also an age group variation. Uh, we can do from pediatrics or congenital all the way to elderly, uh, wear and tear arthritis, and, and kind of everything in between. We also get to do a good amount of arthroscopy at this point, which most people are surprised by. People think of scope or arthroscopy procedures as mainly being uh, knee and shoulder, but these days we can do elbow, uh, wrists, we can even do small joints of the hand, such as some of the uh, big knuckle joints there uh, as well. Um, just to briefly start about trigger finger, uh, trigger finger is pretty common. Most people know somebody who's had carpal tunnel surgery or carpal tunnel syndrome, which leads to numbness and tingling. Trigger finger is the second most common thing we see. So it's pretty common. We do a lot of procedures for it if we have to. The issue usually is pain and, and swelling about the hand. A lot of times though, the thing that sets trigger finger apart is locking in the bent position. So by that, I mean somebody who comes in like this or they have this on a frequent basis. Uh, sometimes they can get down and as they come up, it'll snap. Sometimes people have to manipulate it or kind of move it or crank it open with the other hand to get it to open up. The issue is actually a, a pulley in the finger. So our, there's eight pulleys between here and the tip of the finger and this number one pulley here seems to get too tight. Now whether that's something that people are born with or you develop a tendon that's inflamed, but that pulley's job is to hold the tendon close to the bone. For some reason the tendon can swell up and that leads to that tendon fitting pretty tightly or snugly through that pulley and eventually people develop a nodule. So if you picture a piece of rope or a spaghetti strand and then all of a sudden that doubles in size and forms a pea-sized thickening and when you bend that tendon or that rope, it glides down and that pulley can, uh, can wrap around that nodule and it gets stuck and that's what holds it down in this position. Um, that can happen to anybody. Like I said, it's very common. Um, the treatment options for it, you know, we can give it, you can try a whole bunch of things that don't require a surgeon visit. That includes therapy, splinting, medication by mouth, uh, topical cream, activity modification. Those are all options. 
Um, sometimes that works, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes the trigger finger goes away on its own, uh, sometimes it doesn't. Um, if it doesn't go away, your options are to consider a, a steroid injection. Um, that injection is basically right around the tendon sheath. A steroid or a corticosteroid is a potent anti-inflammatory. So when you inject that around the tendon, it can shrink the tendon down, it can shrink the nodule down, and then it lets it glide through the pulley uh, a little better. Injections are safe overall if you do them in moderation. So we allow people to have two, rec two or we recommend two injections uh, at most. After that, you can start in ending up with some tendon trouble where the tendon can actually rupture. So we only we stick to two injections at the most, um, and it has about a 60% cure rate with two injections. So there's not a lot of things that we can cure uh, in, in orthopedic surgery with an injection. Most people think of injections as, as a means to treat arthritis, and that usually calms down inflammation and can buy time. But for trigger finger, it, it actually can cure it, let that nodule shrink, let the tendon glide through the pulley a little better, and it can be um, you know, pretty satisfying to, to treat somebody without a surgery in that instance. Uh, the, the final option or the third option would be a, a small surgery. The surgery for trigger finger is very small. I often tell people if you have to have a surgery from me and you, you get to make a choice, you should choose to have trigger finger. It's pretty quick and easy to recover from. The surgery is to basically release that pulley. We don't touch the tendon. We leave the nodule in the tendon alone. The goal is to, to try to protect the tendon and not disturb it. Uh, tendons tend to scar down pretty quickly. Uh, so we want to leave it in its normal position and we just release the compressive structure. The nice part is, as I was mentioning, we have eight pulleys in between the tip of the finger and the base. So if you just release one of them and let that nodule glide, then eventually it doesn't stick on the pulley if we release that compressive force or that compressive structure. Um, that involves an incision about one centimeter, so about the thickness of a, of a small finger uh, in the palm of the hand. So we do that right in the creases, actually. We try to hide it in there for it looks better. Um, that works really well. 90% of the time people do great with it. Uh, trigger fingers can come back, but it's unlikely. It's actually more likely that one would get the trigger finger in another finger rather than that same one again. You can do that surgery under local anesthesia or with a little bit of sedation. So local anesthesia means we just take a little bit of medicine, lidocaine, put it in the palm, we put that in there and we let it set up for about 15 or 20 minutes and then one can have the surgery uh, in the office here and usually that means you can walk into the office, you can walk out, there's no starving uh, beforehand, uh, you don't need any clearance or anything like that and most of the time we can consider all the home, uh, we can continue all of the home medications. So it's pretty straightforward. Um, the other option for people who don't uh, like the thought of, of having surgery awake, even though it's, it's meant to be painless and the only pain is from the needle for the lidocaine, um, the other option is to do sedation, which means that you'd get an IV in the other arm, they make you a little sleepy, and then while you're sleepy, we can do the surgery. So again, that's not general anesthesia, uh, but that does involve uh, doing that in a surgery center. Uh, so there's an NPO status or no food or drink for six or eight hours before surgery. Uh, and a couple more boxes to check, but it also works. It works just, just as well. It just depends on the, the comfort of the patient. Um, I see, feel free to type questions in the comments at any time. Uh, we'll be able to get to them and, and get some answers. Uh, I have a question here about um, with having lupus and having some tendon inflammation in the palm. So we see that quite a bit actually, especially with the rheumatology population in, in our office. Like I said, we have a rheumatology clinic down the hall. Um, so a lot of people with autoimmune conditions can get tendon inflammation. Most of the time, that tendon inflammation can be calmed with medications from the rheumatologist. So if it can be treated medically, great, then that usually will, that will go away with some of that medication. Um, if it can't be treated, then if the tendon inflammation leads to the locking, then that, that we go down the same pathway as, as, as somebody without any inflammatory or rheumatologic condition. Um, so that tendon inflammation should respond to medication by mouth uh, as prescribed by the rheumatologist. Um, it may not, and if it doesn't, then we go through the same process. We can direct an anti-inflammatory into the tendon sheath or right around the tendon, and that's what the corticosteroid injection can do. Um, it may never go away. It may never look normal on the ultrasound, but it doesn't matter how it looks. It matters how it feels. So if it's swollen but people have no pain, then we don't need to check that ultrasound anymore. Um, if it's swollen on the ultrasound but causes pain or causes locking, uh, then we can address it. So it may or may not go away, but usually they do a really good job of finding a medicine that works and calming that down. Uh, and if it doesn't work, then the, the backup plan is to consider an injection versus surgery. Let's 
see if we have any other questions here. Um, another question here is uh, why the finger gets stuck. Um, as I mentioned, that finger gets stuck as, it, as the tendon forms a nodule. So there's swelling of the tendon which leads to a thickening and then that nodule glides through a pulley right in this area and that tends to get stuck on the small side of the pulley. Um, so that's one of the reasons for it. Um, another question about a finger that's a little bit of a droop. So that's actually a different type of, of, of injury. Uh, just to kind of demonstrate, there's a picture of somebody who has a droop to the finger like this. Uh, that is a tendon abnormality, not a trigger finger. So what happened though is that the tendon that's in charge of straightening that finger is ruptured. Um, typically the treatment for that, and that can happen from anything, people will jam their finger, it's called a mallet finger. Um, the treatment for it is to wear a splint that holds it perfectly straight for at least four weeks, sometimes six weeks, and that will allow the tendon to heal back there. The trouble with that tendon is it's really thin, paper thin, so it's really hard to repair with sutures and that often doesn't work. So even with successful treatment, there still is a droop of the finger. So there's a small droop to the finger like this, 10 or 15 degrees is typical uh, to have that droop where you try to straighten and it won't come up uh, to the normal level. There's not a good surgery for that. Um, usually it doesn't hurt in the long run. The surgery would basically be putting metal across the finger. So you shoot a pin or a screw across the finger and that would hold it straight. Uh, the pin is temporarily, temp or in temporarily. Uh, that can be removed, but still, even when you do that, it still ends up with a little bit of a droop. So it will always be a little bent if, if uh, with any type of mallet finger. The goal is to try to make it as little of a bend as possible. Um, it will always have a bend in it. I guess that was the question. The swelling will go down. Any type of injury or fracture can take a while. It can take 9 to 12 months for the swelling to go down, uh, but usually that doesn't hold people back from too much activity. It's more of a nuisance or a, a cosmetic deformity uh, more than anything. Um, just checking for some more questions here. There is a question about if, if if you have a trigger finger in one finger, you're more likely to get it in other fingers too. Um, I would say, yeah, um, people who, I often see a lot of people who have multiple digits that are triggering. Uh, I don't know the cause for that. You know, some of it might be inflammation of the body. Um, you know, for sure, people with autoimmune conditions or, or rheumatologic conditions, we often call those inflammatory conditions. Um, you could say that somebody with an inflammatory condition would have inflammation of the tendon which would lead to more triggering. So yes, you can definitely get it in, in more than one finger and there's a couple people out there who've had trigger release in all 10 fingers. Um, I, I haven't had anybody that released all 10, uh, but there's been somebody we finished off with, with fingers 7 through 10. So uh, it can happen and maybe if I'm around long enough that would, that would happen, but uh, it is pretty common to have multiple trigger fingers. It doesn't necessarily have to be simultaneous, but uh, they are, there are a lot of them out there. Um, there's a question, when should I see a doctor for hand or finger pain? Um, it kind of depends on how much it's changing your life. So, you know, if it's changing somebody's life to the point that they can't do the things that they want to do or they can't sleep because of the pain or they're having trouble at work because of the pain, that would be a time to do it. Um, you know, we're pretty limited with the title of this, but there are a lot of problems that can come about. Um, you know, for tendon issues, it's mainly pain, sometimes the locking associated with trigger finger. Um, any of those conditions that aren't responding to, to conservative measures. And when we say conservative, we mean non-surgical. So that includes things like a brace or therapy, medication by mouth, or even topical medication. There's an anti-inflammatory that's topical that works really well uh, for the hands. Um, hands don't have a lot of fat or muscle in the way. We're, we're basically skin and bones, so that medicine that's an anti-inflammatory can really penetrate, even if it's a topical medicine, it can penetrate deeper down and it can uh, get better relief than say the hip or the shoulder as, there's, as those joints have a lot more surrounding tissue that can disrupt the penetration of that medicine. The other thing to note is that we have a lot of people with trigger finger who, who actually have a different condition called Dupuytren's disease. Um, trigger finger leads to pain and locking in this position, but one can open the finger to get perfectly straight. There's usually not too much on the skin that can be noticed from trigger finger. Now that's different from Dupuytren's disease, which is a genetic condition. It actually forms um, bumps or nodules in the hand, and sometimes that nodule starts usually before this line. So everybody has a line in their hand, that crease. Before that line is where that bump usually starts. 
sometimes you'll have a bunch of bumps that connect and they kind of form a rope or a cord is what we call it. When that happens, the finger will start to head down. Now it doesn't stick down. It basically can't be straightened and there'll be a tight rope there that people often confuse for a tendon. It's not a tendon. Um, but that can be addressed. It should be, it should be painless. That's what the textbook says. Uh, a lot of people do have some inflammation there that causes pain, but usually that's not a long-term problem. Um, but that can cause this finger to kind of stay down. Usually it's these two fingers, but it can be any finger that are affected. You don't have to have that addressed until it gets to the point that it limits people. Now, I wouldn't recommend waiting until the fingers come down like this. That becomes pretty hard to treat. Um, but when you, when you can't put your hand flat, so when you can't put it flat on the table or flat against each other, then you do something. So usually that looks like this where people try to put it flat and it won't stay in that position. You can do less invasive options to correct that. It's a genetic condition. It is progressive. Um, it will get worse over time, but everybody progresses at a different rate. Uh, so ideally, if you get it in your 70s or 80s, then it usually doesn't progress that quickly. It means you have a less aggressive type. Whereas if somebody starts with a nodule or a cord in their 30s or 40s, they're more likely to need intervention as it will continue to get uh, worse over time. Um, I have a question here. What would be the cause of someone who has trouble opening their hand? Cannot easily open their fingers from a closed position to play piano. Um, one, is, one could be arthritis. So arthritis would lead to stiffness, but it is still mobile, but it would be kind of stiff, or if particularly in the morning. Um, the other thing would be a trigger finger, but usually that's one or two fingers at a time. So that would be stuck down like this, and they can open them and it loosens up. I should mention that trigger fingers usually are worse at night and as well as in the morning. As the day goes on, they tend to loosen up a little bit. But a lot of people will sleep with their hand like this, and then sometimes one finger will stick or, or lag behind while the other ones can open, and that one stays, stays down. Um, so that could be from arthritis, it could be from a trigger finger, or it could be from that Dupuytren's disease that we mentioned. So that Dupuytren's leads to that um, cord in this area and it, and it makes it so people can't open it. So uh, it gets hard to reach away uh, to get that extra octave. If there is a Dupuytren's cord there, sometimes those fingers don't spread out like they normally would. Can the get condition get worse? Um, for trigger finger, it can get worse. Um, people tend to note that it locks more over time or more frequently. You know, I've had people who every time they make a fist, it'll, it'll lock up and then they have to manipulate it with their other hand, which can be painful. Um, I don't, every once in a while we'll see people who come in like this and they can't open it anymore. Um, so obviously that's painful and it hurts so much that they can't do it. We do worry about contractures. Um, so when we have that finger that's held in this position, you can make this joint not move well and sometimes there'll be a, a contracture, meaning it won't open even with some force. We like to get to trigger fingers before that happens because it's sometimes hard to loosen up this joint. It doesn't, it doesn't take a joke real well. Uh, it tends to stay stiff over time. It doesn't mean it's painful or locking, but that can, um, that can limit people in the long run. Um, Dupuytren's can get worse, but that's that bump we talked about that doesn't hurt. Uh, so I wasn't sure what you were referring to there with that question. I have a question about somebody who, when they cut the grass, the vibration of the mower, um, it'll stop my finger from catching for a short time. Uh, I can't say that I hear that one very often. So you're saying the vibration lets you move better. Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure why that would be. It doesn't make sense from a mechanical standpoint. But if that's the solution, then I guess that's an easier solution than an injection. Uh, but probably not a, a permanent solution. I had a question about if one has surgery, the recovery time. Um, so recovery time is pretty quick. So with the incision, we have to let that heal. So for the first two weeks, I give people what I call a one pound weight restriction. One pound means you can, one pound means you can weight, move the hand, you can move the fingers, you can type, you can use a toothbrush or a fork, uh, small things like that, and you need to be moving during that time but the patient's job is to protect the incision. So nothing heavier than that, and the incision usually heals pretty well. After two weeks, patients can do whatever they like. Now that doesn't mean that they feel 100%. There's always gonna be some, not always, but there's some soreness over the palm that usually lasts for a month or two uh, after the surgery. Um, but that, it, it's sore, but there's nothing to protect at that point. Typically when we do a surgery, like ligament repair or fixing a bone, we tend to have to limit people to protect the repair. But for a trigger finger, we're releasing the pulley. That doesn't need to heal again. What we need to heal is the skin, and all that takes is two weeks. 
Um, so after two weeks, I let people do what they like. It depends on one's occupation to cons in terms of when they can go back. So I've had carpenters return to work at two weeks. I've had people who desk work try to take more than six weeks. Uh, I can't say which of those is, is right or wrong, but everybody has a different tolerance of the surgery. So at two weeks, I would let people go back to their normal job, but I would give restrictions to allow comfort. So we don't want somebody miserable at work if they have to move and grip with force all day. Uh, usually I'll give restrictions for up to six weeks if necessary to make that patient comfortable. Um, I have a question about some exercises. Exercises can be done. I'm not con I don't think the science would say that they're convincingly can cure trigger finger, but it's not going to hurt. So any, any time that you can maintain the motion, you know, the full motion from straight to all the way to making a fist, uh, that's great. Um, like I said, people tend to kind of bend down at that joint because it hurts to straighten it. So if one can straighten that finger or hold it straight for a period of time or even splint it straight, um, that would maintain the motion. I don't know if it necessarily alters the course of the condition. Usually the trigger finger persists. Um, we have a question, how prevalent is thumb arthritis? Um, quite prevalent. Um, I mentioned that carpal tunnel is the most common thing we see in hand clinic. Uh, trigger finger is the second. I would say that thumb base arthritis is the third most common. Um, not necessarily a tendon disorder, but that's usually pain over the base of the joint here. It's usually worse when people are doing a wide grip. Uh, pickle jars or taking the lid off things seems to be the most bothersome. Uh, it tends to be in this area towards the base of the thumb. Some people get it so bad the thumb starts to head in and they'll actually hyperextend at that joint as the thumb stops moving so well uh, from the stiffness of the joint. So I, I don't know the prevalence, but it's, it's very common. We see a lot of it um, when there are multiple measures to treat it. You know, there's a, there's a neoprene wrap, which is a small brace uh, that wraps around the hand. Um, it's pretty small and it still allows the thumb to be mobile, which is nice. So you can still use it for activity. You can still use it for um, guarding and, and things like that. Um, it's, it has to be clean, so it's harder when, when your hands are usually dirty. And so there, it is small enough that you can get a glove over the top of it. Steroid injections can be done for that, and they often buy time. Uh, there is actually a thumb base surgery where it's kind of a joint replacement surgery. There's a there's a bunch of different types of surgery uh, that can be done for the thumb base arthritis. Uh, most of them involve some kind of uh, involve removing the offending bone. So arthritis is bone on bone arthritis, where the cartilage is worn away and the bone rubs on itself. So one of our solutions is to remove a bone in the hand. It's pretty small bone. It measures about a centimeter or less than a half inch. Uh, that can be removed and um, the space can be occupied uh, with a tendon that we usually borrow or move over to that area uh, to try to um, pre or lead to some or to continue with st thumb stability while still allowing range of motion. Um, I think I got to all the questions here. Um, does anybody else have any other questions? Otherwise, I think um, we'll be able to wrap up at some point. Um, we're here in the Green Bay office today. Uh, we, we go down to Appleton. We have an office down there. Um, personally, I'm there infrequently. Um, we have a hand surgeon down there. Uh, and we also go up to Marinette uh, for people who have, who, have um, who live up in that area. Uh, more convenient. So at this point, without any further questions, then uh, we will be signing off. Uh, thanks for tuning in and paying attention, and let us know if there are any other questions.